Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Murky Meg here. It's still Wednesday, the 25th of September. And to be perfectly honest, I was going to do this tomorrow. But do you know what? I thought, nah, this can't wait because this is far too juicy. And just because I love you all, I stepped away from the front room with this beauty of a roaring fire that was keeping me very, very warm on this chilly autumnal day. And I've hot-footed it to my office to bring you this little bit of juicy gossip. It seems the floodgates have opened. Now, just to reiterate, we had, a couple of years ago, the issue of the Times, as I have mentioned so many times on this channel, doing that big hit piece on Meghan Markle just before the Oprah Winfrey interview dropped, of the staff speaking to the Times and Valentine Lowe saying, nah, we didn't like working for her, she was a bully. And that's when the well-known moniker, the Sussex Survivors Club, was coined. Now, earlier today, I dropped this video, which details the fact that The Hollywood Reporter came out a couple of weeks ago and basically said that she was Duchess Difficult and that she was a dictator in heels. And on the back of that, it seems some well-curated and controlled staff members, former and current, went on the record with US Weekly... Or is it Us Weekly? US Weekly or Us Weekly? I'm so confused. My dyslexic brain can't cope. Anyway, they went on the record basically saying that she's the best boss ever. Get this. She gives her staff bundles of freshly cut flowers and home-produced eggs and makes her staff feel like seeds being watered. Obviously, I mentioned that in my previous video. Well, it turns out people are really going up against it. And even more damaging people are speaking, not to The Hollywood Reporter, but The Daily Beast this time. And it just gets worse for Meghan Markle. The royalist correspondent for The Daily Beast, Tom Sykes, heads the article, former employees of demon boss Meghan Markle recall psycho moments. Finally, a headline we can get behind. So... Meghan Markle was a demon who had psycho moments as a boss. People who worked for her have told the Daily Beast. Former employees spoke out after a carefully curated crop of former and current staffers said she was the best boss ever. One courtier who worked for Meghan and Prince Harry as part of their service at the palace told the Daily Beast there have been plenty of difficult royals over the years and I do think after the ill feeling of Mexit when Harry and Meghan left the royal family, Meghan's bad moments were amplified and distorted and blown out of proportion. Princess Margaret regularly got people to hold out their hands to use as ashtrays, for example, and that's just laughed off as hilarious eccentricity. Look at Prince Andrew. He was unbelievable to staff. The source continues, that said, there definitely were bad, very bad, even psycho moments. I witnessed people being chewed up in person, over the phone, and made to feel like shit. Now, the Daily Beasts have offered a comment from Harry and Meghan's office, and they are not commenting over the criticisms of Meghan made by the Daily Beast themselves. Another person who apparently worked with Meghan in the run-up to her wedding told the Daily Beast, I always thought that she was a classic narcissist. Getting her staff to tell a magazine how amazing she is only confirms that in my mind. She's lovely when it's all going her way, but a demon when the worm turns. Now, I said exactly that in my previous video. With narcissists, when they are love bombing you, everything is rosy and gold. When that light turns off, it goes extremely cold and fraught. Another source told the publication of a story of a florist who was screamed at down the phone for half an hour after they posted an insignificant detail online about a bouquet they were working on for Meghan without identifying that Meghan was the client. They vowed never to work with her again, despite the prestige of having her as a client. If you're working for her, you are often treated like a tradesman who could be treated like shit. Quite frankly, this has the potential to be an absolute PR disaster. This article from the Daily Beast and the one from the Hollywood Reporter are both being signalled by the Harry and Meghan camp 
as a smear campaign. But what they're failing to do is letting people speak their truth, which is ironic, seeing as that is what Meghan and Harry effectively want to do. They are proud people to always champion misinformation and the right to put things correct. But, I might add, only when it works in their favour. It's classic PR tactics. They champion the articles that are very pro-Sussex and they will absolutely destroy and say that the not pro articles are a complete smear campaign. This is now the third article that has said that she is a bad person to work with. How many more are left? There's only so many people that can come out and actually say, do you know what, she was a bloody nightmare to work with without people actually listening and going, hmm, there might be some substance here. Now, anybody could have two. As I've said previously, anybody can have a different experience with a boss from another person. And like I've said, the narcissist, if they are shining their light upon you and you are in their absolute bubble, everything is glorious. But God forbid when you actually do something that they don't like and you get shunned. And this seems to be the problem. If you come across Meghan Markle and you don't do something that she wants or the way that she wants it, it seems that you are treated with contempt and disgust. And quite frankly, it seems that you get a very, very barbed tongue. I found an interesting tweet on X. I'm not going to show you the account because I can't actually DM them and ask them for permission to use this because they don't actually follow me. And it says, ultimately, it doesn't matter what the general general public thinks. What does matter is what the industry thinks. She and Harry have no endorsement deals in the past year. Their credibility is shot. Ultimately, what's happening is these publications are just reinforcing what that original Times article by Valentine Lowe was saying, is that in the majority of cases, if you are not on her or in her inner circle of delight, you are out in the cold and you're treated terribly. But that is no way to be a boss. And ultimately, the more people that speak out about this, the better it will become. The more people that speak out means even more people have the courage because others are like them. Remember when they were in Fiji and something went down at the marketplace? I did a video on it. It's my most popular video on this channel. I've popped a link in the right-hand corner. Rebecca English recalled with regards to this very, very event, says, Rebecca English of the Daily Mail recalled, I was there at the time and witnessed Meghan turn and hiss at a member of her entourage, clearly incandescent with rage about something and demanded to leave. I later saw the same female, highly distressed member of staff sitting in an official car with tears running down her face. Our eyes met and she lowered hers, humiliation etched on her features. That is the real Meghan Markle, in my own personal opinion. What gets me is that she's using these positive and carefully curated members of staff to speak positively on behalf of her as a shield, when in fact she should be doing it herself. She should be making a statement and absolutely denying any of this. But narcissists can't do that. They cannot admit when they are wrong or have done something wrong and they do not have the hindsight to be able to do that. A narcissist's biggest fear is being found out for who they truly are. There's only so many damage control articles that can quell this because the more people speak out, the more articles that come out, and this seems like a train that's going to go on and on and on, the more people start to wake up and realise exactly what the truth is out there. Stop using your staff as a shield to speak up on your behalf. Don't let others do the dirty work for you. Speak up or be silenced. And a lot of people are saying, well, the people that went on the record to say that Harry and Meghan, and especially Meghan, were really, really nice, actually put their names to the article. And these are just silly, silly sources with no name. We can't believe that. Are you really, really that silly? You think that people can speak up about this and put their name to it without getting slapped with a lawsuit? There's a reason why journalists protect their sources. And remember, 
one of the people that spoke to the Hollywood Reporter was still on Harry and Meghan's payroll. And what gets me really angry is the fact that the bullying report that Buckingham Palace did, well, it's, it's not being made public. If they had no signs of her bullying staff, they would have said, do you know what? We investigated. It's not true. We found no evidence of this. The fact that they also remain silent speaks volumes. But hey, that's just my opinion. I'm going to finish this video with, again, a very interesting tweet or post on X. Again, I'm going to blank out the person's name, but they said, blimey, it's really all coming out now. Is this a prelude to William allowing the Kensington Palace employees to speak? Or is it a warning to her amid the up and coming divorce? Buckingham Palace has a whole report on her. Has to be a reason for this to all come out now. So, do you think the floodgates have finally opened and it's given people courage to speak out? Or do you just think that, oh God, this is never ending. Nothing's ever going to happen. She's never going to get a come up and so what's the blinking point? As always, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for watching once again.